Hello and welcome to the demonstration video for the 3D Pixel Tiles Pack. I'm going to demonstrate a bit how you can build your own levels using the included assets from the pack. We're going to build a small plateau and then add some trees and such. As you can see I've set up a little character controller here and a directional light just so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to use the X20 plane which is a 20x20 20 20 grid plane that you can use to easily snap things so that they line up properly. And we're going to start with a lower wall tile, as you can see here in the grass dirt set that we're in, it transitions from the dirt wall to the grass ground tile. So we're going to place some of these on the ground as the base. And uh, one important thing is, let's just rotate it here a bit, an important aspect of the pack is that it's set up to snap to units one by one, which I've set up here as you can see. And this is because uh, every uh, piece of the tiles is approximately one by one by one in units. And to align this to the grid so that it lines up neatly we're going to use vertex snapping which if you don't know you hold down the V key on your keyboard then you can choose one of the vertex points to snap to an adjacent model like you can see here moving it around a bit let's start by placing this one so we want a slight plateau so let's make that five tiles wide and the way these wall tiles are set up you only need one corner type or one corner tile but some other corner tile pieces you will need to set up unique ones to get them to align properly And I'm duplicating things and rotating them around. Vertex snapping, very important. If you don't vertex snap every new piece that you're adding to uh, the uh, level, you're going to end up with tiny gaps between some of the tiles. And here I'm duplicating all the wall pieces and snapping them to the corners to make the sort of base for the plateau. Once again here, snapping to that side. Now we almost have a complete base, so let's just duplicate the corners and the lower wall here. Rotate those around like this and snap them to the edges here and we have a complete base. Now of course it's kind of hard to see since it's a one-sided material, but it'll look better once we get to building the actual plateau. So now what we want to do is go to the wall section, to dirt wall, since we're building with that material. And here we have an, an inner corner piece, which is set up with the colliders on the inside, which is for inner corners, as the name implies. But we'll get to that a bit later when we're building a water hole in our plateau. So let's start with the ordinary dirt wall piece, which is just the dirt wall texture as a wall piece with a collider of course we're duplicating it whoops and snapping it around like that making more duplicates to a line over here don't forget the vertex snapping and once again here now you'll mainly need vertex snapping when you've rotated a piece once you've got a piece in place and don't need to rotate it, you can probably just, uh, in most cases, just, oh, that's a bit misaligned. In most cases, you'll be able to just uh, use the grid snapping to move it around, which, if you don't know that either, is that you hold down control and it will snap according to the settings which you've set that I demonstrated before in the window. 
And let's add the corner wall pieces here. The outer corner, uh, as you can see, which has a uh, square collider so that you can't walk through it, which makes sense. And then rotate here, vertex snap again. And the last piece here. Now we're done with the uh, middle portion of the plateau, or the walls portion at least. So let's get to uh, adding the actual ground pieces, which there are edge pieces as you can see here, both inner and outer edges, and there are corner pieces, like this, which are slightly rounded to give a more natural sort of look, rather than the square type look that some games use. So let's start with one of these ground corners. Let's see here. And that's the upper left one. See, they all have names to designate how they align or how they should be placed, which is uh, based according to um, the uh, coordinates in Unity. So the upper right corner would be if you've aligned the camera so that you're facing like the XYZ coordinates. Now let's add the other one here. And now we have to add the upper left. Since I've rotated the camera a bit, it doesn't look quite right, but once you place the tiles in the project, you will know where to place them. And these tiles should uh, preferably not be rotated because they've been modeled so that they align with the grass ground texture. Now let's add the ground edges here, which are also unique in this case because they have to align with the grass texture so that you don't get rotated textures everywhere. And the other edges. This one here, snap and duplicate and grid snap. Remember to hold down control, move those units away. And one over here. If you have a separate package like a grid system that you purchased from the Unity Asset Store, you might be able to use these tiles with it. I have not tested it myself, but I'm fairly sure that if you set those tiles to be three-dimensional one by one by one in uh, size, it should work very well actually. And now let's add the inner corners, which you can see here. This is how they look. These are the base for our water hole, which are, we are going to use. I'm going to snap it over here to align it. And then we should move it down a bit because I want a bit of grass tiles and not just a big hole in the middle so that I can add some trees and such later on. So that's a good place for it. Let's add the other corners. Since I've already added that piece we can easily snap the other ones to that so that we get a complete hole. There we go. Now we've got a little water hole of sorts, which looks quite nice already. But we have to add some grass ground tiles, which is in the main folder of the sets folders. So in grass sets you have the grass tile. Let's duplicate that around. And it's also set up so that it has a collider and everything. So you don't need to worry about any of that if you're using the prefabs, which I recommend if unless you're an advanced user and want to set up the meshes to work with a separate tile system that I talked about before. And now let's get back to the grass dirt set and let's add the uh, lower inner corner so that we uh, get the transition back to grass here in the bottom. And these are also uh, usable in all corners. Uh, they don't have any unique pieces, so you don't need to worry about that. 
And since we were going to have a wall in between there, let's push it down to the bottom. And let's add that wall in between there. That's good. So now we just need to duplicate those around since they're not unique corner tiles. And snapping a bit. That looks fine. Let's duplicate both those and whoop. That <laughs> wasn't supposed to happen. There we have it. We have a small water hole, and now we can add a water tile, which is animated, by the way. It uses a four-frame animation, which is at the bottom right of the texture atlas. And it also has a water animation speed script attached, if you want to change the speed of the uh, water animation. So let's snap it, uh, snap it over here so it gets aligned. And then move it down over here, duplicate, duplicate again, and there we have it. We have a small water hole in our level. And here's the animation speed script I was talking about. By default this sets to 1 and you can remove it if you don't want to change it, or you can increase the speed if you want to have like flowing rivers or something like that. Now let's play it and see how it looks. Here I have the player controller from the web player demo. Just a sort of fairy or wisp of sorts. And we can't quite get up to the plateau because it's pretty high up. So here's one thing that's a great advantage when building with these tile pieces. We can just take these prefab pieces we've already placed and move them around like this. Duplicate, of course. And take these corner pieces here, move that one down, and we have a, a slightly lower part that we can use to get up on the plateau itself. So let's try that out. As you can see, a kind of slow jump here, floating up in the air. There we go. And now we can jump up on the plateau and explore the rest of the level, or whatever you want to call it. And we can fall down into the water if we like, but yeah, that sort of clips through everything, so if we were making an actual game, we might want to think about not making the camera clip through the wall pieces there, so that you can see through the level. Anyway, let's continue on. So, now that we got a basic shape for our level, we might want to add a few decorations. Now, if this was a complete level, of course, you wouldn't have these bare edges here looking out into the infinite nothingness. But for the sake of demonstration I won't be adding any edges or such. So let's add a few trees and as you can see here all the tree models, the grasslands tree, the pine tree and the cacti, they have high poly and low poly versions. Let's first place a high poly version here. As you can see it looks quite nice. It has these roots sticking up, which might mean that you have to move up the model a little bit in order for the roots to not clip through the ground. This is usually more so the case with the low poly model, as you can see here. Because it's a bit of a, a Z fighting. So let's just change that over to 3.01 and we can see that the roots don't clip through. And here you can see the, the differences between the two models. Of course, there are more sharp edges and uh, the low poly model looks a lot more square, which is uh, nice if you want a slightly more low poly look, or if you want to use them as LOD models. The choice is yours, of course. And they have the same sort of capsule collider, but we're going to use the high poly tree, so let's remove that one. Move this one around a bit and maybe add a few more here. And one down here. For the sake of decoration. Another one here and one over here. See, now we're already starting to get what looks like an actual level of sorts with trees and everything. So let's add a few bushes too. We have three different variants, the bare bush, which is just the 
bare twigs and we have the leafy bush which you can see here and then there's a snowy variation for the snowy lands tile sets. Let's duplicate this around a bit. Get a few bushes here. Let's also add a few plants which come in five different variations. We have the green one, let's also place a blue one or with a blue flower and one with a red flower. See already it looks quite nice. Imagine if we had a much larger level this would look very nice with this amount of detail and everything. Let's move around a bit. Looks quite nice. Of course we would have something surrounding the ground plane as I said before, but for now this works fine. Last but not least, let's also add a rock here. There are four different variations as you could see. The ordinary ones, let's go with that one. There's also mossy, sand, and snowy. Let's place a medium rock here. That looks quite nice. Now one last thing, let's also demonstrate the roads. Here you can see the brick road tiles. The dirt road tiles are the same pieces. They have a lower and upper end, straight, turn and crossing. And just like the roots of the tree, because these are transparent textures that you overlay on the level, you can see that they sort of clip through, which means we have to move them up just a tiny bit. Like so. See, that's enough to get it to not clip through the geometry. Let's uh, duplicate the piece a couple of times. We're getting a straight road here. Let's add a turn. The great thing is, once you've placed some of these tiles, you can use vertex snapping on these as well to snap to the other pieces. Let's add an end piece here and another one down here. See, once you've placed a few tiles or pieces, it gets really simple to just snap new pieces to it, which makes building a lot faster once you've got the, the sort of method down that you like to use. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you'd like to play the web player demo, you can find it in the links below in the description. Thank you for watching.